I want to calculate the moment of inertia of a rod of length L and mass M. But to do that, let me, before I do that, let me explain why, what the moment of inertia is and why we care. Imagine that I have two masses connected by a very, very light stick. And these masses are rotating about the center. The center mass doesn't really matter at this point. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that I can write the kinetic energy for this system as the sum of 1 half m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared. But if, if they have the same angular velocity, and that's the, the key here, if the angular velocity, and this is about a fixed axis, not, so it's not a, um, it is an angular velocity vector, but if that's true, then I can write v1 as r1 omega v2, and this is just a scalar version, r2 omega for v2. If I put that in up here, I get k is 1 half m1 r1 squared omega squared plus 1 half m2 r2 squared omega squared. And so they both have this 1 half omega squared. I can factor that out and I get 1 half. And then in the middle, I have m1 r1 squared plus m2 r2 squared omega squared. We call this term the moment of inertia i. It's the sum of m r squared for each mass. And so if you have a finite number of masses, you just add up m r squared for the whole thing. But if you have a continuous distribution, then we need to break that into tiny little pieces and then find the, the, the moment of inertia for each piece. And so let's do that. It's going to end up being an integral. So let's do that about the center for this rod right here. So just in general, i is, I don't know why I wrote that, i is the sum over i, m i r i squared. So you take each mass and you add up it's uh, multiply it times its distance from the axis squared, uh, and then you add those up. But if I have just, um, if I break it into tiny pieces, like I am going to do, draw a big stick. This has a length L and a total mass M. So each piece, I'm not going to have M R squared. I'm going to have DM, and then this is going to be, we'll just call that R. If that's the case, I can find the contribution to that element, di, is going to be equal to dm r squared. Now, I, I can't, I could integrate both sides, and I get i is the integral dm r squared, but what's, what's r and what's dm, and what am I integrating over? Well, let's first talk about the limits of integration. If this is my x-axis, I want to add up from over here to over there. So I want to go from... Uh, x is negative L over 2 to L over 2. That's what I want to integrate over. So that's my limits of integration for x. So I can go ahead and write that as the integral from negative L over 2, L over 2, dm. And I'm going to go ahead and say my r is going to be x value. So it's going to be x squared. But I can't integrate that because I have dm and I have x. And they're not the same integration variables. We can fix that. If I assume the rod has a uniform density, then I can say the total mass over the total length is the dm mass over the length of that, which would be dx. So now I get dm is m over l dx. If I put that in, I get i is the integral from negative l over 2 to l over 2 uh, m over l x squared dx. And I can integrate that. I'm going to pull the m over l out front, m over l, and then the integral of x squared is going to be x cubed over 3. And then I need to evaluate this from negative l over 2 to l over 2. OK, so now here I always make a mistake when I'm integrating with uh, over, over a, a uniform like this. I'm going to do what I like to do. And you do what you like to do. But I always make a negative sign here if I don't do this. So I'm going to integrate actually twice the integral of m over l uh, x cubed over 3 from 0 to l over 2. That just makes my life a lot easier. If I do that, I get 2m over l. And then I get x cubed at l over 2. That's going to be l cubed over 8. And then I have a 3 down there too. And 
minus zero. So let's cancel some stuff. That cancels with that, I get four. That cancels with that, I get 1 12th ml squared. Okay, and that's about the center. What if I want to change it and find the moment of inertia about one end? So now I'm gonna put the stick right there such that the end is at the uh, origin. And now I'm gonna get the exact same integral, right? I'm still gonna get i is the integral of m over l x squared dx. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. But my limits of integration are gonna be from x equals zero to l. Uh, and so now I can't do that trick, but that's fine. Uh, and so if I integrate this, I get m over l x cubed over three zero to l, and that's gonna give me one third m l squared. Okay, let's do one more, let's do this one more way because I wanna show you that the point about which you rotate matters and what if you wanna do any point? I'm gonna show you how to do any point. Um, so what I'm gonna do is to break this into a finite number of elements, uh, of element size n. So what I'm gonna do is put a mass, I'm gonna actually draw balls, n number balls to make my, my stick. I'm gonna do it just like this. And then I'm gonna have uh, point O, I'll just call, I'll call it point O, is some vector location. And in that case, if I wanna find, I can move point O to wherever I want, I wanna find the moment of inertia. So what I'm gonna do is to find this vector. So this will be, um, we'll call that just R, the vector R. And then D, or just the I, is gonna be the sum over all those points, M I, and then I'm gonna to have to say the magnitude of R squared. So I'm gonna break this into points, however many I want, I'm gonna draw those because I want to. I'm gonna pick some location and then I'm gonna calculate the moment of inertia. And then I can put that, I can put the location wherever I want. I could put it here and it should be one third ML squared. I could put it at the center and it should be one six ML squared. So we're gonna do this in Python because I think it's fun. Uh, so let's jump over here to Python. So here we are with Python. Let's make this a little bit bigger. That's good enough. Okay, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I'm gonna say the mass is 0 0.2 and the length is, you need numbers for these, uh, 0 0.5, so half a meter stick, it's 200 grams. Just made that up. Uh, now, I want to go ahead and draw my points and then I, no. No, I'm gonna go ahead and pick my observation location, point O. Let's start this off uh, at a place that we know. So I'm gonna put it at the origin. So it's gonna be vector zero, zero, zero. In, let's put in as something reasonable, uh, like 10. And I'm going to say uh, n equals zero. I like to do it this way, this is how I count. I'm gonna say count from zero to 10, uh, and I can just do that while n is less than n, print n, and then n, n equals n plus one just so you can see how that works. There you go, there's my ends. Now the next thing I need down here is my dm. dm is gonna be the total mass divided by the number of points. Um, and I need dx. dx is gonna be equal to my total length divided by n. Because I need to know how far to move each point. Okay, let's go ahead and put some points here. I'm not gonna name them, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a vector location for each point. Now, we have to make a decision here. Uh, let me go back over to the paper because this is actually an important thing. And you can do this different ways. So let's say I wanna make 10 points in a line, like right here. So here's my stick. I wanna break that into 10 points. Let's break this into, uh, actually, one, two, three, four points, just for uh, a picture here. So if I consider this to be a point mass, where is the point mass located? Well, it'd be right here in the middle, right? So if this is gonna be dx would be uh, L over four, because I have four pieces, um, what, where would that be? What I'm gonna do is put that right here. I'm gonna put the location of the point on the left, and then I'm gonna find the next piece by adding dx, add dx, 
add dx, add dx. And that's wrong, right? But the more points I have, the closer the, the left point and the center become. So it just makes it a little bit easier. If you want to go back and, and put it in the center, that's a great homework project, project for you. Okay, so let's put, I'm going to call this RT, just so I can draw them. RT is vector, uh, it's going to be equal to the starting location, 0, 0, 0, plus the vector uh, n times dx. So n times dx, 0, 0. So when n is equal to 1, it will be 1 dx. When n is equal to 2, it will be 2 dx. So that's, those are my locations. Now let's draw a sphere there, and I'm just going to draw it. Uh, its position is going to be equal to the vector RT. Its radius, I need to pick something reasonable here. Let's say it's going to be equal to L over 20. Let's just see what happens. Let's just do this. It should have 10 masses. There you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Done. Okay. So now, and they're in a line. Okay. And the first one's at the origin. So that's good. Now I can go ahead and calculate i. So I'm going to calculate i by starting off by saying i is equal to 0. I'm going to calculate the moment of inertia due to each point and add it to something, but I need something to add it to. So I'm going to start with that value of 0. Now I can say di, oh no, let's calculate r. r is going to be equal to the final position, rt, minus the point o, which I, as o, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a, not a 0, that's an o. So that's that vector location for each object with respect to the, to the point. Now I can calculate di. It's going to be equal to dm times the magnitude of r squared. I'm going to add that. i equals i plus di, and then that's done. I'm done. So let's just print that um, i num for the numerical version is equal to i, and then units would be kilograms, uh, times meters squared. And I put this at the origin, so let's just go and print uh, two more i's. i uh, left uh, side. This is going to be i from the side. It's one-third times m times l squared. And then let's print i uh, center. Oh, that's not good. Caught that. I center is going to be 1 12th times m times l squared. Okay, so let's just run that. Okay, so uh, my numerical i is 0 0.014. It should be 0 0.16. Okay, uh, so let's just see if I increase the number of points if I get something closer. Let's just, just jump to 100. So if I change n to 100, all I have to do is change that. That's pretty much the same. Okay, and you'll notice all the points kind of melded together, which is fine. I don't really care about that. Now let's move my observation location to L over 2. So I'm going to put this at uh, 0, L over 2. So that means I'm now at the center of the stick, so I should get the 1 12th. So you'll see I, it, it looks just like the center. But now let's put the observation location like just somewhere else. Let's put it at uh, L over 2 above. So I'm going to put this at L over 2 right here. I can put it wherever I want, anywhere I want. And you see I get a different, oh, I get the same as from the side. That's kind of, should I? Oh, yeah. Well, let's put it somewhere else, see what happens. Um, let's put this at L. Let's put it at uh, 0.1 times L. I get that one. Hmm. It's very close. It's not the same. Okay, it is different. Okay, but you can put it anywhere you want. That's the point. And this is a, an example of a numerical integral by breaking it into small pieces. The end.